Welcome to Greenie's Garden. What's up, Green Army? It's Brandon and Alyssa. Hey, guys. And we hope all of you guys are having an awesome day today. We wanted to bring you guys along with us today on the pond maintenance. So I know we told you guys we we're going to make a video on how we do our water change with our pond. The first video was a little bit of detail about the pond. Um, this one's going to be about the maintenance, which is the most important thing about a pond. Besides the beautiful fish in there, maintaining that is so important. You know, because think about it. The fish are using the restroom. And what is their restroom? This pond right here. And you don't, what happens is their waste can be, you know, I'm trying to get the best way to say it, love. Their waste can, you know, if you don't do a water change, it, it could be damaging to them. So yeah, we, we just want to jump right into it and show you guys. Some things may look a little familiar, like this fake rock here that looks real. Um, just like last time, we're gonna go ahead and take this off and just kind of show you again so you get familiar with what we showed you in the last video. Um, but one of the most important things, of course, is turning the waterfall off. So we have to turn the waterfall off. So I'm gonna do that, okay? All right, so now that we have the waterfall off, which is way too quiet out here now. I know, it seems like a different backyard now. I know, it's like, wait, we're missing something. Seriously, once you have a pond and that noise in the backyard, you will like miss it if you have to even just do a cleaning or if you don't have a pond. Once you hear that sound, it is hard to let it go. So yep. <laughs> it's so, it's always, it always blows my mind every time we turn it off. It's like, this is so weird. Um, but we try, every week, we try to do a water change. If not that, what would you say, love? It's maybe every two weeks. Maybe. Don't go past that. Like, again, that water can be toxic for the fish, and you do not want that. Um, one thing about the water is taking the water from the pond, you can still use it. So I don't know if you guys can see around me all the trees saying, me, 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 give me the pond water. That's what we do with the pond water, guys. And I'm going to get more into that in a little bit on how we do that, how we pump it from the pond to the plants, but that is the goal. So we're again, we're gonna get right into it. I'm gonna give you guys a little recap of the skimmer here. As you guys remember, this one, it, when it's on, it's gonna give a current that actually pulls the water from the main pond into the skimmer. And then what it does is it goes right to the skimmer box here. Clean this out every day, especially for us in the winter, having Henry, the Chinese elm over here. Uh, he drops his leaves, cause he's a deciduous tree. So he'll drop his leaves in the winter and he'll wake up in the spring. But that being said, guess where most of those leaves go? Into the pond. It is a labor of love. So we definitely just gotta make sure, you know, instead of cleaning this every day in the summer, I'll come out here, you know, maybe check it two, three times a day because you don't want this to get clogged up. You wanna make sure all that water's flowing through. Um, it's filtering out all that, you know, uh, bad water. So what we do is we have this little like door right here that I plug up and I pull the skimmer box out. I cleaned it earlier this morning, so it's not gonna be as bad, but still, I cleaned it maybe a few hours ago and it still has, you know, like some leaves in it. They're decomposing, which you never want your leaves to turn into compost tea in there. You do not want your leaves to break down in the water. So, um, you know, look, it, it's really not that bad. I still like to run the water over it after we're all done because it is a cleaning day. So we're just gonna clean everything of the pond. So the skimmer box comes out. I always just set it aside over here. And there is a filter in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna show you guys here. Well, here I'm gonna get the bucket ready actually too. Cause what we like to Okay, sorry for the awkward interruption. We had a client call on the phone here and we wanted to make sure we gave them our full attention. So back to you guys. So what I was saying was, if I can remember catching up on the last little video there is I'm gonna be pulling out this filter down here. And I can already see some Gambusia that like to take a ride like we told you guys last time we're what I like to do is actually pull this filter out and look at that Look at that gold for the fruit trees So what I like to do is I could like put it in this bucket here You kind of just got to cram it in there a little bit. We actually might need to get a new filter It's kind of chipping up a little bit. Yeah, it's getting old. So one second. I'm gonna grab the hose over here Okay, so now that I have the hose what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna clean off lightly clean the filter I'm not really gonna use you know, uh, power on it yet, like jet power. Um, I'm just gonna kind of put all this gold in this bucket here. And then we 
are gonna give it to the lovely avocado, which it knows it's routine once a week. So just like a real quick rinse, which we'll, we'll clean this more. But what I'm gonna do is put this to the side and then I'm gonna put this hose right here on the bamboo. And then what I'm gonna do is, so we have a net because we do not want the gambusia to be on the fruit trees. We wanna make sure that we look out for them and put them back in the pond. So we try not to waste our plastic and reuse it as much as possible. So this is just a regular gallon water jug. This is a gallon, right? Yeah. Okay, I don't want to space in it. So you just cut the top off of it. Doesn't have to be perfect. We just cut a top off because what we do is I go in here like this and I'm first gonna empty this skimmer out, okay? So look at that water. Yum. Yeah, right? <laughs> Not for us, but. And then what I'm gonna do is just put it through this net and then when I'm all done, here, first I'll get a couple more scoops. And definitely don't be touching your mouth or anything. Just kind of keep your hands to yourself here and you want to make sure you clean your hands really, really good after you do a water change. So here, this is a five gallon bucket. It's called the Commander XL. Sounds intense. So look, so that's why we grab this and we just want to make sure there's no fish in there. So each time I do this, I just kind of lift it up, make sure there's no fish. And then if you want to love, follow me. And then we're going to take this over here. We're gonna carry it over here. And with all of this pond water right here, this awesome food, we're going to put it right here on the avocado. So easy as this is I'm just gonna lightly kind of pour this on the berm area. Sometimes it flows really fast. So I kind of just, you know, give it a couple seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're just gonna kind of pour it over again. This is so beneficial for your plants, guys. So if you have a fish, you know, even like a fish tank inside, a pond, put that water on your fruit trees. Oh, check this out. So real quick, a little sidetrack. Look at the longin right here, guys. Four years later, and look at the fruits on it. It flowered and fruited last year, and it looks like it's loving the fish water. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, cool. So yeah. We're gonna go back over here to the skimmer. Do you hear the baby birds? Aww. They're in the bamboo somewhere. Okay, so get so sidetracked in the backyard, it's crazy. <laughs> it's easy to do. So then, and then pretty much, I'm just gonna show you this real quick and then we'll cut to the next step. Same thing guys, I put the net in here and then I'm just gonna start filling up this Commander XL five gallon bucket. And then all we're doing is we're just putting the net here, make sure we don't get any fish, which it's been like months since we've, we've had fish in here. Normally, when we first had our pond, we'd pull out so many fish. So we're like, hey, we need to make sure we're being safe and we're not gonna, you know, hurt any of the fish that's in here. And then as you can tell here, you can kind of see all the leaves still in here. And there's the pump at the bottom. Yep, which we're gonna get more into that. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna empty out the skimmer just like this, and we're going to put it on the fruit trees on this side, and we'll tell you why, okay? Okay, so if you wanna look down here, love, as you can tell, the skimmer is almost empty here, and you guys can start to see the pump here, which when I get it out all the way, we'll definitely go over the pump and show you guys. One thing I wanna show you is we don't have a check valve at the top you know, portion of the skimmer here. So what that means is there's about 25 gallons in the cascade that when I open this here, it's all still in the pipe and it stops about right here. So what's gonna happen is once I release this gate, this little opening here, whatever you wanna call it, you can start to see the water come out, okay? Since I, we didn't put you know another check valve here, our check valve is right down here, which again, we'll be able to show you guys in a little bit here. We need to drain the water from the cascade. So now that I have this door closed, now this is gonna fill up again with about 25 gallons. So I'm just gonna keep doing the same routine. I'm just gonna open this so there's like a nice fast flow. Depending on how much time you guys have, you can have it go slow if you want. You can have it fill up fast. It's just since we don't have an overflow set up, if we did have an, sorry, if we did have an overflow set up here, I could just open this, 
and let all this 25 gallons spill in here and not have to worry about it, you know, overflowing. But since we don't use this, I prefer to just do it this way so we can move the water to the bucket and then I can put the bucket to where the hose and the pump, which we'll show you in a little bit. Since that won't reach our whole yard, I just do it by hand. So manually put it in the bucket and then put it on the south side of the, you know, of the yard with all the other fruit trees. So once again, I'm gonna get the 25 gallons of water from the Cascade into the skimmer and we're gonna drain this skimmer completely. So I should get busy doing that now. We've got this net, make sure there's no fish. And then just same thing guys, I'm just gonna fill up this little, this little gallon jug here. Right into the bucket. And this normally takes, it's just a guess here to clear the cascade out this way. I guess it takes no more than 10 minutes usually. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's nothing too bad. It's more of like a labor of love. I actually enjoy just kind of making sure all the fruit trees get it. It feels so, I don't know what it is. It's like you get that feeling and you have to just experience it. I'm just like feeling so grateful and happy that you're putting all these nutrients that you would think is nasty, disgusting. There's fish poop in there but the plants are saying opposite. So it's not always what you're thinking, but it's what the plants want too. <laughs> so now that we're right here and the water pressure is pretty low, I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this off completely. So we may get a rush of another 15 gallons or so. So as you can see, that's what I was talking about. When that thing's 25 gallons on the cascade filled up, if we were to just close this door and let it flow out, it's fast. Yeah. I will be honest, I did it once and it was a disaster, <laughs> uh, but it just kind of overflows here. So usually if you just kind of keep up on it and don't just leave it, you should be able to beat the water from overflowing. And again, I did it once and it was not the case, but I learned the hard way and I never did it again. So it's the best way to learn. Yeah, definitely learn from my mistake there. And again, you guys can get rid of that mistake by adding like a, like another shutoff valve right here. You guys can have the overflow uh, flex pipe that goes right here. We just chose not to use that. This will be my last bucket because I'll show you how we'll do it a little bit faster now. So this first part's always kind of the like the slower part. Again, I kind of feel like peaceful about it. It's nice kind of moving all this good water to the other, to the other plants here. And you could do this as many times as you want unless you wanna buy a bigger hose for the pump to pump the water from the pond out. If you have a longer one that can reach other parts of your yard, then hey, go for it. Um, but for us, we just have this for now. That's pretty full right there. <laughs> it's pretty full. So then... And usually when I'm not holding the camera, I'll take some water and put it on our potted plants or our garden. Yep. It's just hard to do that with a five gallon bucket because it's so much at one time. All right. So I'm gonna put the bucket aside real quick and we're gonna pull out this pump here. So I'm gonna show you guys a good example. Look at this. This is what's going to, if you don't keep up on this, this is what's going to mess up your pond. It's gonna make it work a lot harder. As you can tell, this is almost like a little filter for it. Look how gunked up that is. Like if you look on the inside, I don't understand how water's getting through there even. Yeah, so like that's what you guys don't want. That's why you want to keep up on it because even if you do it every week, this could happen, especially with some of the liquids we use. It breaks down a lot of the bad stuff in the pond. And then again, it's do th this is kind of a good sign because it's doing its job. It's really, that pump is sucking that water through here. And look at that. That is not what you want to keep. Like imagine if you didn't do your pond for like a month or two. That is very, very bad. Oh yeah. Way too uh, much strain on the filter. Way too much strain. Or on the pump, excuse me. No, you're all good. So what you want to do is we're, we're going to take that off. So I'm just going to grab the hose here and right on this bamboo. So you guys see the before, pretty gunked up there. So when, look at that. <laughs> That's what you want it to be like right there. You want it to be clear. Look at that. That's what it's supposed to look like. Much better. You want to keep it this way as much as possible. Make sure you know all that water can get through to the pump. So now with that being put aside, I'm going to put the water on the bamboo there. And then I'm going to show you another thing that's clogging up your pond. Sometimes the skimmer basket can't do all the work, and that's fine. You can't just trust in your skimmer basket to take care of everything, because maybe you gave it a day or two before you cleaned it out. And with those leaves being in the water, 
they get soggy. Maybe some leaves are smaller than the opening here. So I just wanna show you guys so you get a good idea. See the openings here? They look pretty small, right? So you would think, oh, okay, it's gonna catch big leaves, no problem. But like you just saw, some of it goes through, guys. And what happens is, look at this, babe. If you can show them that. Oh, it's actually not that bad. Of course it's not when we're gonna do a video for you guys. <laughs> Normally right in here, you guys will see a bunch of leaves. Yeah, you won't even be able to see that green. I'm so surprised. This is like the first time it's never been like really bad with leaves. So normally, yeah, you guys will see a bunch of broken down leaves in here. Uh, maybe a, a little bit of dead algae that got sucked through the skimmer basket. But that's what clogs up the pond. And the way to really know if that's the problem is if you look at your cascade when it's on, you're going to hear a very low, slow flow. And again, depending on what type of pond pump you got, ours was the Alpine Cyclone 2100. So that being said, we know that that waterfall is loud. Right. But in the beginning, do you remember when we could tell off of the waterfall when this piece was clogged? Yeah, if you pump? come outside and it's just trickling, it's usually because this is totally gunked up with leaves. Yeah. So pretty surprised, but it makes sense because the waterfall has not been making that trickle sound. So sorry, I just really wanted to get into detail and show you guys the difference in that part. Uh, the next part we're going to do is... We are going to clean out the check valve. Even though the, the cascade was working just fine, while we're here, we're just gonna clean it out. It just makes sense. Plus, we're going to be adding this hose right here onto the pump, and you guys will see why in just a second. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna twist this off here. If you wanna watch your, your knee there, I don't wanna oh, yeah. get the water on you. I always forget how long that is. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is just kinda slowly twist this off here. And of course, when you guys go to put it back on, just make sure it's exactly how you found it. You don't want to strip the pump um, because you have to buy another one. So look at this, pretty gross. So this is your check valve right here. This is what stops most of that gunk from going you know, through this pump. Um, this is something that, again, we watched Eric Triplett, so we just built this little thing ourselves. Um, but yeah, we, we won't get too much into that. So actually, while we're here, all I do is I'm just gonna Clean off all this fish poop and all this gold right here is what we'll call it. And just put it on, on, like, on like your guys' trees or if you have a garden bed, just clean it off. And then I'll show you how I clean it off at the very end. I usually just do like a quick clean in, in the beginning. Just kind of get everything cleaned off a little bit. Um, so now that we are here, I'm gonna do the same thing with this. I'm gonna pull this over here and then just kind of pose all this stuff off here. We get all this stuff off. So now that's pretty much cleaned off. And this is like one of my favorite parts. Because <laughs> you, you guys will see. Here's the hose, guys. This thing is a lifesaver. Help me out, love. I think we got this for like 40, 50 bucks at Lowe's. I think so, yeah. It's a flex pipe. Yep, it's a flex pipe. And then we just put the attachment here, which you can um, just screw this down so it gets tight on one side of the pipe here. And then you have the same thing on the opposite side. So this is where the water is going to come out here, which I will show you in a minute. And then with this flat head here, we're just going to put it. So here, I'm going to actually put it back together for you. So we're going to put this little filter back on the pump. And then this piece goes right on the top. So instead of feeding it to the cascade, like, like I told you guys in the last video, please make sure that this goes to your cascade and nowhere else because the water will spit out. So what I'm gonna do is just tighten this here. And that way, when this beautiful pond pump here starts spitting out water, it's pretty powerful. You don't want it to, you know, come off of this here. So just do it, you know, fairly tight. There we go. Pretty, pretty hand tight there. As you can see, it's not gonna come off here. Yeah, it's not perfectly watertight, but right. for what you're, we're using it for, that's okay because it's gonna stay in the pond. So this is what it's gonna look like, guys, right here. So when I put this in the bottom of the skimmer, pretty much just like normal, like, like, like when the pond's running normal, except for you see now instead of the, the pipe coming in here to the cascade, it's going to be going out here, which when I turn it on, we'll show you guys, into the bamboo island. Um, so what, what I'm gonna do here is Another safety thing for the little fish here is we showed you guys this little door right here. We're going to open this and then we like to stick this net right in here. It's nice because it, there's, there's like a rock right here. So it like pretty much holds the net and then we just pull this back 
And that's what's gonna, you know, help um, the baby fish not go through this pump and put them into land. Because yeah. we do not want to do that. Yeah, they don't want them to do that either. We're not gonna be the reason <laughs> for that. So we're gonna leave this little door open here. I'm gonna go plug the cascade in now. I know it sounds weird, but what that's gonna do is we're gonna pump this water out into the fruit tree area. There we go. All right, so as you guys can tell, now what we're doing is we're pulling the water from the pond. I feel like a fireman. I thought you looked like one. But look at this island right here. Watch your step, love. Yeah. This goes on for about three minutes or so before we have to start you know, turning it back off. This is like flood irrigation, guys. Look at this. So in the area we're at right now, this is where we have the Chico Sapote, which is doing great. We have the bamboo here. We have an emu bush. We have a mango tree on that side. We have a loquat, which is right here. And look at this, guys. It's just like a quick flood irrigation. That just poked me. Oh. Ah. Okay. You all right? <laughs> yeah. So then what we're going to do is we just pretty much lay it right here, guys. So as you guys can see, I'll just in all the water. Look at that. It is getting flooded with nothing but nutrients from the pond. Um, if you guys want to come back to the skimmer over here, you guys will see. You obviously, it's best when you have two people, but you want to make sure that you don't let your pump run dry. Because check out what's happening. Now it's sucking the water from the main pond and it's coming into the skimmer. And what it's doing is it's pumping all that, that water out. And of course, over time, that level is going to drop and you'll start to hear the scary sound. It's the sound you never want to hear in your pond. Uh, the um, pump running dry? A pump running dry. You don't want to do that. So can't stress that enough. You never want that to go dry. And it could go dry if you don't clean out your skimmer basket because it's so clogged. The water you know, can't really seep through to the pump as much. And then you'll start to see your levels drop just like how it is right now. It's, it feels so good to know that we're getting all of that fish pee and poop out of the water because again, it could be toxic for them. Um, and then we're just gonna push it out this way, guys. And look, it's already like a little river over here. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> and look at this, guys. It is just flooding the whole area over here. I think that's why this island looks so great is because it gets so much of these nutrients right here. And then we kind of just put it on the neem tree over here while I'm kind of keeping an eye on the water level, which looks good. And like I said, it goes for about three minutes, guys. But again, don't just quote me on that because you could have a different pump. It could come slower or it could pump faster. So just make sure you're kind of keeping an eye on it. And we're just going to leave that right there. It's starting to get low. What a river over there. Yeah, as you guys can see, just making sure there's no... Yep, and look. Can you see the fish right here? I don't know if you can see them. Oh, yeah. So we want to make sure they're out. This is about to get low left. Yep. Okay, go ahead and unplug it as soon as you get there. And normally when I'm not holding the camera, this is my job. <laughs> it's a little hectic, sorry. No, you're all good. Wow, it took so much water this time in the island, it started leaking out. That's like the first time it's ever happened. Oh, wow. Look. This is how we do our, we try to do about 20% of our water. Yeah. So we notice that after we run this for the three minutes, and then we'll do it a couple of more times, and, um, and then that's pretty much all the water draining that we do. Yeah, so what we're going to do is I'm going to do this about two more times, and then we're going to show you guys what the pond will look like when it's at that point, okay? Cool, sounds good. It's us again. So we're back here. Okay, so real quick, we got the skimmer completely cleaned out. So once we got all the water out, there was still a little bit of like fish poop and broken down old algae and all that good stuff for the trees. So we just cleaned all that out and now that water is nice and clear now. So it's not that dark, dark, dark like compost tea color. So now that that's all clean, I turned on the water pressure on the sides and got everything all cleaned up. So now that that's all ready, we're going to hop over here to the things that we took out earlier. So we're going to start with the first thing we took out, which is a skimmer basket. So even though it's, it's still relatively clean, I still like to just go over it 
with a little bit more pressure with the water. And that way it's just gonna, you know, definitely make sure that everything's all cleaned up. There's not gonna be any spot. See, like that side right there? There's a little bit of taro roots in there. You don't want it to get clogged up. So while you're here, just get it all cleaned up. Just take that pressure, get all that stuff off. And sometimes you might have to kind of set it down and then just kind of rub your hand over there. That's all cleaned up. And then last but not least, go on the inside. And again, it, it may not be perfect because you guys are going to do this every day anyway, three times a day in the winter. If you guys have, you know, deciduous shade trees next to your pond, just like that. So now you're just going to make sure everything's all cleaned off. It's nice and neat now, almost looking brand new. So now that that's done, I'm going to put that aside. And then this part here. So what I want to do is clean out the check valve. And where's the check valve? This piece right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to force that little valve open in there. So this cool little tool right here, it, it's like a, a skewer. Yeah. So, but not for us. It is part of the pond maintenance. So what we're going to do is just fill this side up. Yeah, the whole point of the check valve is to keep water from going backwards into the pump. Yep, keeping that dirty water from going back in there. We're going to fill this side up and then watch how the water comes out the bottom once I open that valve. See, right there. So what I like to do is just do that a few times. That way, if some leaves are in there, because again, from our mistake, is we did not clean this part out of the pond. And we, went, we put everything back together and we're like, wait, why is this the cascade not turning on? It's because this piece was clogged. So that way we're just making sure everything's nice and clean. Do that about two times. Give it a nice spray down again. And that one's ready to go. All right. So put that to the side. And this awesome filter here. Same thing, guys. We're just gonna turn on the power here, some water. And then we're gonna let all this good fish gunk go right to the banana over there. So now you, you can like see through it. You can see how you can kind of see through. Oh yeah. So that's a lot better. Now this isn't gonna be clogged up. It's gonna let, make sure the cascade's running nice and smooth. So now that all that stuff's cleaned off. So we have our pump here. And just same kind of thing, guys. Since I put it on the ground, there's, a little, there's a little, like a little bit of dirt and leaves here. Just get that cleaned off. We, we just wanna show you guys as much detail as possible of our pond. So if you guys have one, we hope this helps. Or if you guys are thinking about a pond or and then we just kind of get everywhere around here. Make sure not, not to spray your wife with all this stuff. <laughs> like coming I out. appreciate that. It's coming out over here. So then I grab this little filter here and then I just make sure that everything is cleaned off. You wanna make sure all those little um, openings are able to be nice and clear of debris. Just like that, guys. That's every piece that's cleaned up. Our pump, our skimmer box, we have our filter, and the most important, our check valve here. And this is what connects the pump, like you guys saw, to the cascade. So what I'll do now then is I'll put this together in front of you guys. This is probably the hardest part, in my opinion, because sometimes <laughs> it doesn't want to match up. So my little trick is, if you put it on dirt, just make sure you, you clean that bottom piece again. What I figured out is, I get it on there, don't strip this part. I kind of just give a little bit of pressure on the top here, and you just kind of give it a slow twist. Hey, first try? Yeah. Nice. I've been getting pretty good at this now. <laughs> you definitely don't want to strip this, guys. I just said it a hundred times, I feel like, but just take your time on it. I know it could be frustrating sometimes if it doesn't want to go the first time. So see how it's starting to kind of tighten up? I go one more full turn after it's hand tight. Just like that. See? So then what I'm going to do is... Oh. Ah, <laughs> I see. That's something I do every time. <laughs> Grab this. Get the whole pond put back together and have to get back in there to put this little guy on. A little filter on there. So just how you guys found it. And I should be telling myself this. <laughs> Make sure you have your pump, of course, with your check valve on here. And then you got your little filter on the bottom of the pump. And then how we situated it, we followed Eric Triplett. See how it just lines right up to this piece right here? So what's nice is there's like a little gasket in here, which never comes out but I'll pull it out just for you guys. This little ring right here. When you go to open your cascade, make sure that doesn't fall in because have we done it before? Yes. Oh, yeah. More than once? Yes. <laughs> so we just want to make sure that you don't lose that. So make sure that gasket's back on there. 
everything's all cleaned up here. And what's nice is as long as you line it up a little bit, you put this piece on there, it's pretty good about just lining itself straight again. So you see how we're just gonna tighten it and then wait for it to get, see how it's a little hard to turn. I do one more little turn just to be safe, a little extra you know, cautious like that, just like that guys. And then we're gonna go just like that. So you, so you kind of see how that looks? We have the power cord to the pump here and it's nice because it gives you like a little ridge right here and then you just feed it down here and then this is going to be the filter. So everything before it goes down to the pump, it's gonna get stuck in this knit, but not always as we saw. So good example of that. Don't just rely on this. You still gotta clean it out. It's not gonna be like this forever. So definitely just double check it. Once that's done, we can put our skimmer box back on. Just like that, guys. It looks exactly the same, except for it's empty. And much cleaner. And much cleaner, right. So then what we do is when I open this little door here, no water's gonna come in most likely because we took about 20% of it and that's usually about almost to that first shelf. So what happens is since we took so much water, there's not really much water to flow back in this way. There is a little bit. So the next step we're gonna do is I'm going to fill this up here. So what I do first is I fill up the skimmer again. And then once the skimmer's filled up here, Okay, so I'm going to wash my hands and then we're gonna show you a couple more steps of cleaning the pond out and we'll be all done, guys. Now the water we have out where we live has a lot of harsh chemicals in it and chlorine. So there are a few products we use. So we'll grab those really fast. So this is what we use to get rid of the chlorine. Now it does come out on its own in about 48 hours, but that can be too much time for the fish. So we'll go back over here to where the hose is. We don't want them to burn their gills. So we're gonna put some of this right into the water where the hose is pouring out. And then we've got a couple other products that we'll put in in just a minute. Another part is pond plant pruning. So we have to prune all of these plants here. Um, as, as you can see, they get kind of a little crowded. We had a, a baby windstorm the, the other night, and then a lot of these taros kind of tipped over, as you can see. So what I do is I'm just gonna go in there, and we are going to clean it out. What I do after I grab most of these, I just throw them into the berm areas that way. They can compost over time. And then, yeah, I'm just going to do this for a little bit. Maybe we could do like, like a little time lapse. And you guys will be able to check out the pond before it's pruned up. And then we'll see what it looks like afterwards. So let's do this, guys. Wow, looks better. Maybe I can get by that cascade. Oh. 
So now that we have the cascade on and our skimmer is filling up with water, and I believe you already showed them. Yeah, we put of, some of the dechlorinator in there. You're awesome, thank you, love. Okay, and then what we're gonna add is, I'm not gonna get the super detail because it all depends on how many gallons you have and what type of pond and size you have. So I'm just gonna let you know that we have two types of bacteria, one's liquid and one is powder form. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna add, you said six of these, right? Yeah, it's about six little tablespoons. So we have a little measuring cup here. And I'm gonna do six of these, just kinda add it right where most of the, um, what am I trying to say here, love? <laughs> where there's the most uh, circulation. There you go, geez, thank you, love. And then we have the powder, which is, well, check it out, it looks like, it's almost shiny, it's like diamonds or something. Yeah. So I'm gonna grab a scoop of this, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and add it right over here. Just like that. So that way we got those in, and then we're gonna go ahead and put in some of the barley here. And again, with our palm, it takes eight pumps. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a few right here. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And that kind of helps with algae. Yep. Which you guys, like we mentioned in the first video, you will have algae. Like we take a deep breath, roll with mother nature, and do as much as you can to help with the process, but it is part of the process. So yeah, that was cleaning out our pond. I know it's a little bit longer video. We really hope that it can help you guys because everyone always asks us about a pond. Like, oh yeah, super easy, I want one. There is maintenance to the pond. Normally this takes, what, about an hour? Yeah, maybe like start to finish. Tops. So you gotta make sure that you're willing to put in that time, or if you have a company do it, I'm sure they offer those services. But we would enjoy the process ourselves. So as you guys kind of saw, we took a dirty pond that needed to be changed out. We went ahead and cleaned out the skimmer, the filter. Um, we, we took off the uh, check valve, and then we cleaned the bottom of the, of, of the skimmer itself. And then of course, most importantly, the pump. We made sure the pump was super clean. So that way when everything's cleaned up, guys, you're really doing a lot. Not only for, you know, the investment you guys spent your money on, which is not cheap. It's not cheap to have a pond, especially, the, you know, that startup. But what you get after it, guys, is just amazing. You gotta make sure you take care of your fish, guys. They don't wanna live in that fish poop and fish pee. You gotta clean that stuff out. Give it to your fruit trees. They'll love you, your garden. Um, if you guys have a fish tank inside, um, you know, put that on your plants too. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today. And as always, we hope all of you guys have an awesome day today. Bye guys.